Good evening, everyone. My name is Nathan Arnold, and today I'm going to be going through my chapter four for Teach the Doc uh, for the precipitation reactions and ionic equations. Now, for the first practice problem, we had to write a complete ionic equation for the following molecular equation. And we used the solubility rules in table 4.1 to write in the missing phases. So here we went through, we looked at um, which ones are soluble versus insoluble, and this was insoluble due to the iron that is attached to the PO4. Uh, and so we looked at, um, we essentially split them apart, where we have the 3Fe2+, um, which is aqueous, which is the 6-bromine uh, minus, which is aqueous, as well as the 6K3+, um, and and then we have the 2PO4 minus, and then we have this going to the Fe3PO4 um, 2 because that's insoluble, so it doesn't change. The 6K um, plus, which is aqueous, and the 6 bromine minus, which is also aqueous. And then when we take out um, the similar on both sides, we have um, what remains is the net ionic equation of the 3Fe or 3 iron 2 plus, which is aqueous the 2-phosphate, or 2-PO4-3-, minus, which is aqueous, and then the iron uh, phosphate, which is a solid. And then go to the second one, which is using the solubility rules from the same table. Um, we have um, BaSO4, which is typically soluble, however, it is not with the um, barium attached onto it. And then with the PO4, it is typically insoluble, if I remember correctly, but when we look at the table with the sodium, it is. Um, it's the reverse, that um, this is not soluble. And KOH is soluble because K is a group one. And NO3 because uh, is soluble because, um, or it's always soluble, I believe. And we go to um, showing the uh, cations and anions would swap in double displacement reaction and showing this ionic equation which I uh, didn't have the space to write the full net ionic equation but if we get down to it we would go from the AgNO3 and the BaCl2 I mean it would eventually come down to 2 Ag plus which is aqueous um, plus 2 Cl minus which is aqueous to the 2 AgCl which is the solid and for Question three, we go into more, more on stoichiometry. And for this first one, I believe, uh, it, I believe this first one wasn't necessarily a question as it's more of giving us the equation here. And so I kind of just reiterated the equations of the number of moles. Um, we have the CH3OH, which is two moles as stated here. The O2 has three moles. The CO2 has two. And the H2O is four, which we'll use in the next two questions. As here, we're using dimensional analysis to convert the three point, uh, if we had 3.56 moles of CH3OH to the number of moles of uh, O2 required. And so essentially just restated the question here. And so we then put it up into a ratio. And as we have given in the question above, two moles of CH3OH is to the three moles of O2. And so we put that in a ratio of on equilibrium, where it will eventually be equal to the 3.56 moles of CH3OH is equal to X amount of moles of O2. We then go ahead and cross multiply. So we'll do the X times 2, and then the 3 times 3.56, and then divide by the 2 to get the X alone. And therefore, we have that 5.34 moles of O2. And we have the same principle here uh, for uh, 15 moles of O2 as we have 3 moles of O2 produces 4 moles of H2O as we had in this first given equation. And so we'll go here and we don't have lines but we have 3 to the 4 is 15 to the x. We'll cross multiply so it'll be x um, times 3 and 4 times 15 which x times 3 is 3x three and 4 times 15 is 60. So therefore we have uh, 60 divided by 3, which equals 20 moles of H2O. We then move into uh, practice problems on the molar masses, or excuse me, on limiting reactants. So for this first question, 
we have here uh, an equation of bromine going into, excuse me, uh, we have bromine going into, and C6H12 going to C6H8Br4, and so we go to calculate the moles in the given equation of the different products, or of the different reactants, now what is the limiting reactant? And so we have less reactant of the Br2, we know that is the limiting reactant, so we'll look at the theoretical yield, uh, which is the amount of that re limiting reagent or reactant, which is the bromine, times the 399.7, which is the molar mass, to get the um, theoretical yield, which is the 59.4 grams. We then compare that to the actual yield, and we see the percentage yield that we actually were able to obtain. We go ahead and here we're doing a solution stoichiometry where we're finding the uh, molarity of the um, concentration. Um, and so here we first find the number of moles of the HCl, which is uh, 0 0.1475 moles. And then we go ahead and do what we did in earlier problems, which we do is cross multiplying to figure out the number of moles of BaOH2. And then once we have the number of moles of BaOH2, we're able to use what we know for molarity, that it's moles over volume in liters. And we're able to plug in that value that we have for uh, for the moles of BaOH2 and the volume which is given to us in the question and we're able to find that the answer is 1.50 uh, molarity. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope this provided or <laughs> proved useful. Thank you. Have a good one.